Good morning, everyone. Looking at my watch, it's 2.30 in the morning. I'm dropping the camera down to 325 to 375 foot of bottom depth. We're cruising along really nice and easy in this current. And we're looking at a sand seafloor with a lot of snails on it. And I'm going to drop down a ledge about 20 feet. And I want you to look at the seafloor, how it changes almost into a volcanic clay look. You see that right there? Amazing how the seafloor changes so quickly. Within 20 to 30 foot of bottom depth drop. Looking at my depth finder, we're almost hitting 350 feet. In this particular shot, we're back to the sandy mounds again. And there's a snail or some type of crab in a shell that's moving across. Let's say if we were up in Alaska in a snowstorm on the tundra and the wind's blowing at us and we're trying to make our way home. It's kind of what this critter here, I think, is feeling. You see the marine snow hitting him? That would be like a snowstorm for us. You see the mounds and the big area of land? Well, that would be like it for us. And you compare the size? <laughs> Crazy how it works, isn't it? Now we're going to drop down a little bit further, another 10 feet or so. And look at this. Nothing but gravel and barnacles. It's amazing what I can see with these cameras. Looking at my depth finder again, we've now broken 350 foot of bottom depth. <laughs> Uh, look at the ratfish in the far distance there swimming along. Not a real big one. It's pretty small. Some of the ratfish in Puget Sound have been three feet long, some of them. If you've just joined us for the first time, I want to welcome you. And this is part one in a series of about eight parts that are going to follow along on this seafloor. So stay with me for the next upcoming YouTube to learn more about the South Puget Sound's deepest depths. Bye-bye, everyone.